do when they give us equitable title is they also give us um, the obligations. <clears throat> so when you um, hold a driver's licence, absolutely, you're also accepting the obligations that go with it. So yes, there, you are accepting liability. Um, ownership. Well, you only can ever get equitable title under this system. They don't give legal title. And of course, legal title is granted to the trustees and you're not the trustee. So um, you have the right of use um, in equity, uh, which is a lease, um, a tenant, but nothing more. So I, I kind of need a bit more information to, before I can sort of qualify that further. I, I, I don't know if I've answered the question exactly what was intended. Yeah, I'm not sure either. Maybe Brian knows a little bit more about what. Uh... Well, uh, one of the parts about the, the driver's license is, uh, is the severity of the obligations as what they actually see as the benefit. So, for an example, uh, enforcement of, like Frank actually said about the jackboots, uh, is actually seen from their uh, point of standpoint as a benefit. So uh, the driver's license is a nom de guerre. That's why usually the last name is first. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Brian. All right. Uh, another question. Are, aren't we the only ones that can condemn ourselves by giving first-hand testimony? Are we the only ones that condemn ourselves by giving testimony? No, because in their system, silence. We condemn ourselves in silence. We condemn ourselves in, in – and I, when I say running away, I mean not that – I'm not saying anyone's a coward, but by not addressing it. Uh, in, in their system, yes, we condemn ourselves. We condemn ourselves by not objecting. That's probably their biggest argument. If you look at the history, and this is pr probably one of the most astounding things that, that people don't realise, when people create conspiracy sites and say, look at this, like look at 9-11, there, there are two things that the, that the parasites and the ruling elite have done uh, dutifully virtually every time. One, they have given multiple public notices multiple times before they commit an act of extreme evil. And most often, Hollywood will commission a film, several films, so that it is unmistakable. Books will be commissioned, so it is unmistakable that this is what is going to happen in the future. They scope it and say, this is what's going to happen. And then when it happens, um, of course, um, you know, they, they make a sacrifice. So they, they give notice to us before they commit their evil. And if there is no objection in the public notice uh, aspect of what they're doing, then we have condemned ourselves, absolutely. But I have to say that one of the biggest changes in the last two years, uh, and it's almost almost gone unnoticed in, um, in because of the global financial crisis, is that we were, I, I feel, almost without a shadow of a doubt, facing a major negative action that was going to take place, certainly in a number of key places. That seems to have abated to the point that there almost is coming out an unmistakable series of signs that there is now extraordinary infighting amongst the ruling elite. So that's an extraordinary turnaround of events, however that has unfolded for whatever multitude of reasons. But um, condemning in their eyes is uh, lack of objection more than anything else. Okay, yes, that makes sense. Okay, <clears throat> next question. Does the force come from the established definition at oneheaven.org? Um, you might, I, we didn't really cover where those canons have come from or maxims, but uh, so this question is, does the force come from the established definitions at oneheaven.org? Well, that's actually not a bad, bad question. Um, the answer is the force comes from when you believe the words and you live the words and become the words. It doesn't come from the fact that I write them. Um, that is a, a, a significant difference in this. Um, you need an author, sure. You need a witness, sure. But what are the first five words of the ecclesiastical deed poll, because this is the turning point. When you send an ecclesiastical deed poll, 
The first words you're saying after, by the way, after per curiam divina is, we, the divine, immortal spirit. That's what you're saying. Not Frank O'Collins, Brian or Terry or anyone. So when you're doing that, you're giving notice to something that was, well, said to us 2,000 years ago. I mean, if you believe the words written 2,000 years ago by the uh, prophet, the um, the character variously called Yeshua, Messiah, Jesus, whatever label you want to say, then one of those is that the, the mystical concept, I'm in you, you're in me. So when you say we, the divine and mortal spirit, you're, you're, you're stating quite categorically that no one stands between you and the divine. No one. Not Frank, not a pope, not a bishop, not a guru. No one. You're taking ownership. You're taking claim. That is the force. There is nothing more powerful in the universe than that. Now, okay, I, I, I have to take some credit for this. And, and it, it is a blessing and a burden. You know, it's a joy and a trial sometimes to do this. Uh, but that is the central message. And these canons mean absolutely nothing unless in your hands, after reading them and studying them, the words become vibrations, the vibrations become something in you, the word becomes you, you become the word, you are the law. And that is the power, the force. Which is coming from where, Frank? Well, it's coming from where people want it to come from. It's coming from the divine. Um, and, and how do I prove that? I prove that by saying to each and every one of you that we are all part of the divine. I'm part of the divine. I have certain gifts. You have certain gifts. I, I, I've met and I've been honoured to meet people who have gifts of psychic clairvoyance. I have none of those. <laughs> I'm as clairvoyant as a rock. <laughs> but I have different gifts. Um, some people have the ability to, to write brilliant music. Brian is, you know, overflowing with talent. And one of them is, you know, his, his creative gifts of music and brilliance. And, uh, and so we all have different talents. And uh, there's a parable about that. Um, it turns out that, that one of mine is that uh, from, a, from a certain age, um, this has been like a, I don't know, like a thorn in your foot that just keeps aching until you finally address it. And it is that uh, we all need uh, and want and hope to stand up, but someone has to light the match. Well, Martin Luther lit a match. And he wasn't alone. I mean, a lot of people stood up. So I guess all I'm doing is lighting a match. Um, but it's, you know, one of a better word, and I know the word is, is, is laden, but it's a job. But where does it come from? It comes from the divine. It comes from exactly the same source. And, and, it, and it is, and hopefully is, self-evident when people see it. Now, I will qualify one thing in that. And I've said this before. When you read One Heaven and you read a number of sections, there are confronting aspects to it, not the least of which people will see when they see ecclesiastical law. Confronting, challenging. And it is e easy for people to say, well, this is not divine. This can't be divine because, for example, they're talking about um, the end of hell or they're talking about certain treaties or they're ter talking here, they mention occasionally about demons and you know, angels, and that's all, you know, we talk, never talk about that. Well, what the ruling elite get us to believe is that there is these two sides, they pretend to represent the good, and then they go off and they secretly worship the dark. And so long as they do that, we allow them to continue this torture where they promote a war in heaven, and they promote a war on, on earth. And until the war in heaven ends, there can be no peace on earth. So all I say to you is that when you read, uh, we grow, hopefully. 
We grow in our faith, and our faith is strengthened and not weakened. And I mentioned, I sent an email out the other day, and I said this the other day, um, one of the one of the pronouncements of faith of anyone that has been brought up in believing the truth of the Gospels and the truth of the Bible is that at the end of days of evil, the dead shall rise. As a miracle, the dead shall rise. And I shared the understanding that in the reading of, of uh, the covenant, when hell is ended, then there is something worse than being dead, and that is being in hell. So when hell is ended, the dead rise. And I also shared the idea that when you realise SESTA KV trusts have been put in place and that the existing system treats us as the living dead and these canons smash once and for all the SESTA KV as lies, then literally you are watching before your very eyes and particularly when you sign and seal Ecclesiastical D pole and then walk to the bathroom and look in the mirror, you are looking at the risen dead, literally the risen dead. Now, if that doesn't strengthen your faith and validate your faith and validate the source of this, then I don't know what can. So that's my answer. Very good, Frank. Thank you. All right, do we have any other questions? There are a couple of uh, other folks that came on the phone line. I thought maybe you came on for uh, asking a question or two. Brian, did you have anything else you wanted to add regarding some of the chat? Uh, I think we've uh, we've covered quite a lot. And again, is uh, we're we're going to cover the uh, the deed poll in a little bit more detail uh, on on the Sunday call uh, for uh, that Frank's doing. Okay. So yeah, uh, I'm fine with uh, anything else you want to do uh, cover tonight. Uh, we can probably leave for us for another time. Yep, we're, hit, we're approaching the top of the hour, Frank, um, just uh, turning 11 o'clock Eastern time. Uh, if we have no other questions, um, do you want to let everyone know when the next uh, call uh, will be? Absolutely. Yes, there is a Sunday call um, by the invitation of uh, Gary Ray, and, and um, if anyone is interested in that call, then we're more than happy to, to share the number that, for that talk show. And, of course, um, we will be doing the same on this talk show uh, next Thursday. And all I ask is, uh, in the interim, that I really do want to make this relevant and I hopefully, as I've done tonight, hopefully answer questions that people have and help you in your learning. So please send those through so that we can make the topics and the subjects relevant to you. The other thing we'll do so that we're not going back to the same issues over and over what we're going to try and do is also um, next time is forward in advance the kind of topics that we'd like to include so that we're um, continuing to learn as a group. And it means that if, if someone does come on for the first time, then at least they can go back to the recordings of previous talk show and uh, hopefully get up to speed. So thank you very much for organising this, Terry. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Michael Joseph. Thank you for all the calls uh, and, and all those who listened and all the questions. I uh, look forward to speaking, if not on Sunday, then definitely next Thursday. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Frank.